Okay, so we just got done talking about uh, combinations of functions. Now we're going to talk about composite functions. And what, what it means to be a composite function is that one function is embedded within another function. And there's two different ways, actually three different ways, of notating a composite function. I have two of them written there with the g of x inside the f parenthesis. So it's f of g of x. Or you can use that little circle symbol right there, and that is pronounced the same thing, f of g of x. However, you can also just write f of g like that without the parentheses and without the x. Okay, and all that means is you're taking one function and plugging it in for all the x's of another function. Okay. So let's uh, try a couple examples here. We have f of x and g of x. And if we're looking for f of g of x, we're going to take the entire g of x form uh, equation and plug it into every x that's in f of x. So f of g will be 3 and then the g of x function plus 4. And then you'd simplify. Okay, that's all that you're, you're doing on a composite function. Plugging one in for every x and the other. All right. That's f of g. What if we were to try g of f? Because they're not the same. Okay, in this case, we're taking the entire f of x function, plug it in into every x that's in the g of x function. So it would look like that. And for Pete's sake, please remember that 3x plus 4 squared is 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. It's not 9x squared plus 16, the single most common mistake in all of mathematics history. Get it right. like that and simplify all right so we took f of g we took g of f believe it or not you can actually embed a function within itself say f of f okay so in that case you're gonna take 3x plus 4 and plug it right back in to the x that's in f of x all right so you're taking 3x plus 4, oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, so you're taking 3x plus 4 and plugging it in for that x. And simplify. Okay, now before we go on, I want to do one more example. Just because... I didn't give anything that had uh, more than one x in it. Suppose that we had f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 9, and g of x equals 3x plus 1. Okay, I'm doing this example because there's two different x's in that case that you have to plug into. So you're going to have 3x plus 1 squared minus 2 times 3x plus 1 plus 9. All right, and remember to do this correctly. 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 minus, and distribute that to 6x minus 2 plus 9. And you got 9x squared. Those two cancel out. So what do we got here? Plus 8. Okay, my point was that when you have a function that has two different x's, you have to plug it in to both x's. Okay, well, let's talk about that domain. 
For those of you who didn't watch the last video, you have no idea why I just did that. But then again, there are many things people have no idea why I do. All right, so composite domains are a little bit different. You need to consider the domains of both functions just like we did before. Uh, and any restriction on the embedded function may not appear in the resulting function. Okay, in other words, after you simplify things, the resulting equation will look like, hey, it's perfectly good. There's no domain issues at all. But the perfect example is having f of x equal x squared and g of x equaling the square root of x. Okay, because when you try to figure out what the domain of f of g is, and you actually calculate f of g, you get x. That solution would imply that your domain is all reals. But that's not true because g of x did not have a domain of all reals. g of x was already limited. All right, so if the embedded function, the one, the one that goes into the other one, has a domain issue, you need to remember that, okay? The resulting domain of f of g is x has to be greater than or equal to zero, just like it was for g of x. So keep that in mind. All right, let's try this. What is the domain of f of g? So there's a couple things we need to keep in mind. We have both a denominator issue and a square root issue. When we take f of g, you can see that it's right there. Okay, when we simplify, this is what we get. And we again, we have a square root issue and a, a denominator issue. All right, we are still going to have the restriction that we had for g of x, which is has to be greater than or equal to zero. But now we also have to worry about the, the denominator that resulted. And we have to set the denominator not equal to zero. And that results in, that means x cannot equal plus or minus 1. Well, x can already not equal negative 1. It has to be greater than 0. So our result would be uh, all reals such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and x cannot equal 1. Yeah, there it is. Now it's official. Now it's actually text instead of handwriting, so it's official. Um, that's all you need to know about doing composite functions. Have fun. Adios.